Zimbabwe's Fertile Citrus Belt. For nearly a century, these orchards' juicy harvests have ranked among the country's most recognizable export commodities. We're in the citrus orchards of Mazoe, just north of Zimbabwe's capital Harare, where fruits like oranges and lemons have been grown for decades. But recent land reforms have changed who is in charge of Zimbabwe's trees and how the fruits are being grown. Like many of the country's agricultural sectors, Zimbabwe's citrus game was long dominated by white settlers and their descendants. People like John Parrott. He now serves as a farming advisor on a major local orange estate and as the chairman of the country's Citrus Growers Association. We are standing in probably some of the oldest citrus orchards in um, Southern Africa. Uh, Missouri has been part of the industry for well over 100 years now. We have the lemons, we do the navels, valencias, grapefruit. The horticulture is fast growing to be part of the main source of foreign currency. The country now has roughly 3,000 hectares of orchards under cultivation, with roughly 3.5 million cartons of fruit being exported each year to Europe, the Middle East, Russia, and Asia via South African ports. But Zimbabwe's output was once more than three times larger. That's before the land reform policies of the early 2000s dramatically changed the ownership profile of the country's farmland. The land reform uh, literally destroyed the citrus industry. The farmers who were predominantly doing it were the white farmers. We lost 6,800 hectares of trees. It was the expertise and the, the pull and the skills to produce it, but that whole infrastructure collapsed. The policy's goal was to distribute land back into the hands of indigenous Zimbabweans, like Ifanos Mudzimunyi. He's a veteran of the Second Chimaranga, the 1970s guerrilla war, which eventually toppled the country's colonial apartheid regime. Mudzimunyi doesn't hesitate to recognize that the land he stands on was won at a high cost. I was offered this land by the Ministry of Lands uh, under their program of downsizing farms. The bottom line when we want war, it was because of land. It was not because of living in cities, it was not because of driving beautiful cars and whatsoever, no. It was because of land. We needed our land back. Even though I can enjoy the fruits of the struggle, but memories cannot be washed away. The land we have today, it is because of the blood of our sisters and brothers. But fertilizing and irrigating the thirsty trees is a challenge. Recurring drought is causing water sources to slowly dry up. This nearby reservoir is at its lowest levels in years. Citrus is a high volume crop with low value. You've got to have water. If you don't have water, you can't grow export citrus. Water is scarce here. We don't know what's going on with the Mazoe Dam. We are busy drilling boreholes. Historically, squeezing oranges for juices and concentrates has been a crucial method for adding value and using up undersized fruits. But unstable electricity supply and a shortage of foreign currency has made it difficult to maintain the industrial infrastructure necessary to process all of the country's output. We are not supposed to throw them away, as you know. We are supposed to take them for juices. But it, it seems it has become difficult for these juice plants to cope with the fruit in Zimbabwe. They are lying idle, they are rotting, so it's a loss. Not a loss to me alone, but the country, if not the world at large. Perhaps the starkest challenge is a widespread lack of skills and know-how when it comes to orchard management. After the war, Mudzimunyi formally trained in citrus agronomy at university. Despite having fought and watched friends die for the decolonization of Zimbabwe's farmland, he says the former orchard owners may still have a role to play. 
But the problem is that people who are more experienced, most of them they are not in Zimbabwe, they are outside the country. So we are expecting such people to be in here and to work in Zimbabwe with us, helping each other, you know. I think we can ask them to come home and work for their country. The crop's potential is undeniable. Talks are even underway to add vast markets like China to Zimbabwe's export repertoire. But farmers, both old and new, agree that training, investment, and a coherent strategy will be necessary to see the sector truly bear fruit. Daniel Plafker in Mazowie, Zimbabwe, for CGTN.